Hi there, my name is Jocko Vanekor. I'm the founder of Winning by Design. It is an exciting moment as what I'm about to share with you is the culmination of years of what we have been working on. Let me put it together for you. Historically, what you'll see is that we worked along a funnel. We call that the standard B2B model. This funnel actually was created and often seen as primarily generating revenue and profit at the outcome of perpetual deals. Now, what we noticed is that that funnel was split in two, often referred to as the marketing and sales funnel, but essentially it is in the deal funnel and the lead funnel. And that's what you see down here. Leads are flowing in and turning into deals. This was often assumed to be a linear relationship. In other words, when I wanted to have twice as much revenue, you know, many sales leaders would say, well, if you double my quota, I'm going to need twice as many salespeople and I'm going to need twice as many leads. And so we perceived that to be linear. One of the great things that happened as a result of that is that we really started to focus on what was the key activity, closing. And you'll often find this in the more conventional and traditional B2B sales organization, a big focus on winning the deal. You know, it is the, the most celebrated, awarded, and so on and so forth. This put the, the gravity of that organizations often at that part where the deal closes, even to the point that the marketing function was supportive of that initiative to close deals. Today, what we see with recurring revenue, as you see depicted down here, it can no longer be just generated based on recurring revenue. There is no recurring revenue. Those upfront dollar figures do not are not significant enough to offset declined acquisition costs, which constitutes the, 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 the both the marketing and sales costs. So, what you'll see is that there's little to no revenue out of a recurring revenue deal, and often that is not enough. So what we do is we create another set of activities. This other set of activities is referred to as the recurring revenue funnel. This is where those deals that come in that have closed and that have started to be onboarded are turned into a recurring impact. Now, that is where this key and the challenge starts to occur. This recurring revenue is, can grow or decline based on churns or resell and so on and so forth and creates a recurring element by doing it again and again and again. What we notice, however, that if you keep doing it again and again, a profit will be established over a period of time. That period of time, as you will see in many market uh, research out there, sits somewhere between 18 and 24 months. And a lot of people have seen that this is about 21 months for the, you know, for the median across about the top 40 SaaS companies. It takes them 21 months to recoup the previous, months, the previous month marketing and sales cost. 21 months. This tells you how, much, how important it is to establish that second part of the funnel. This also tell you that at the end of the, of the acquisition funnel, where we are looking at historically, there is no close. This is merely the start. And even calling it a close is you know, not indicative of what it really is. What we now will do is we will line up both those funnels because when we line them up properly, new trends start to become clear to us. What you'll see down here is when we line them up, this model we call the bow tie for the obvious re reason how it looks. First, what you'll see is no longer do we call it the close, we call it the mutual commit. Mutual commit, also commit. What we mean with that is both parties are committing themselves to achieve something. Now, what are they looking to achieve? They're looking to achieve impact for the customer. What you'll see on the left, we will continue to call that the acquisition funnel, but on the right, we'll call that the impact part of the funnel and combined, they form the bow tie. What you find is that there's a new first principle of business. This first principle is radically different than the historic principle of the previous B2B, what we've been working along for the past 20 to 30 and 40 years. The evolution that we have gone through no longer is able to catch up to this drastic change that has occurred. This occurrence of this new first principle is best stated by recurring revenue is the result of recurring impact. No recurring impact, no recurring revenue. If you do not get out of your monthly subscription what you want or your annual subscription what you want, your customer will not renew. Recurring revenue is the result of recurring impact. 
This is a first principle of recurring revenue business. This is the fundamental truth that if we adhere and build our business on that, we stand to do well. What you'll see is that the recurring revenue in this world is not you know, a, a function of linear function. It is a function of an exponential mathematical formula. It is to the power of the amount of periods. The length of the contract, the renewal cycle, whether that over a three year period is three for three years or 36 for 36 months, creates a compound impact that by far ch you know, changes what we are looking at. Now, to give you a practical example, this happens all around us. We often take examples from sports, and in sports, this has happened you know, most recently in sports with the Golden State Warriors. They found that the mathematical uh, uh, results of the three-point line based on two of their shooting guards were more indicative and were better than the two-point line. And as a result of that change in the three-point, the conversion shot between the three-point and the two-point shot, they were able to change the game. And many will say they've changed the NBA because of it, as more and more shooters started to become very accurate at that three-point line. Everything changed. No longer is it tall players surrounding the basket. It became perimeter shooters and rapid play. The game changed. So too has the game changed in our world of recurring revenue. We can no longer adhere to these standard methodologies, to things as you are familiar with as band and medic. There will be a role for it. I'm not trying to say we let them go and I'm gonna come back to that. But we have to consider that something has drastically changed. Recurring revenue has caused a fundamental shift that is displayed down here in this bow tie, where primarily the focus was on closing and closing the deals, and now it is achieving profit to, by a result of recurring revenue, which is the result of delivering recurring impact. This is a significant change, and it does not come naturally to most organizations. It does not. Historically, comp plans, recruiting programs, uh, expertise, it is deeply ingrained into our culture to celebrate the win and to primarily have a maniacal focus on winning and closing those deals. Yet, mathematically, we see that this is no longer where the revenue and the profit are generated. I want to take a closer look and show you what the challenge of that is. When you take a closer look and when we line up lead generation, lead development and so on and so forth, it seems to be that the client would normally flow through in this direction. This is, however, not how it happens. What we have done is each department has been given a volume metric. You know, like, for example, lead gen could be an MQL volume metric. And that volume metric is measured. I delivered you 200 MQLs this month. It is up to you to convert X, Y, Z. Not only did we see that, that they created this, uh, these silos, furthermore, we see that alignment was further emphasized as each department, each function in the business started to adhere to its own model, its own methodology. None of these methodologies were aligned with achieving recurring revenue and therefore achieving recurring impact or rather recurring impact and as a result achieving recurring revenue. None of them had that in the fundamental. Let me prove that to you. Historically, our lead gen campaigns are based on ICPs. If you look at the definition of an ICP, there is no description in the traditional ICP of what impact it is that the customer wants to accomplish. We talk about it's the CFO, we talk about the title, the role, the region, and so on. But impact is not specifically mentioned. In many cases, Legion's output is an MQL. Similarly, we will run in full parallel companies, uh, uh, programs, campaigns, and strategies, which were referred to as ABM or ABS or ABX and so on and so forth. This is targeting and also often described too in the popular terminology as a reverse funnel. And what we see down here, you'll see that the outcome of that is MQAs, a very different metric, very differently done. Again, we're not necessarily in this program looking to see what kind of impact we can have. Impact is now a different thing versus what the lead gen campaign is. If we further this down and we look at lead development functions such as sales development and so on, we see that they are using different techniques. For example, spin selling by Who the Weight Institute, a great methodology to learn how to ask a client questions. But when we look at spin selling, again, you know, often a recommended technique and a technique we would highly recommend that your sales professionals learn, 
What you'll see with this technique, it doesn't necessarily take into account recurring revenue. It was not invented during that particular point in time. Bands goes even back further. It was not invented for recurring revenue. So if we start creating forms of qualification on band, we once again, we are, this is not designed. The outcome of that could be referred to in certain terminologies as SQLs. I refer to them as discovery calls. Again, what we are going to see is that if you move down, sales actually runs off a different funnel. Those funnel often is based on opportunity stages. Those opportunity stages are very linear. You see very rarely that it is a closed loop, that systems go back and forth or opportunities go back and forth. They actually only move through a few stages. When we look at the methodology in use down here, Medic, it is a great methodology, which we continue to recommend that you do. But Medic primarily is a deal inspection methodology. It helps and improves forecasting. When we look at Medic, natively, it, mo it focuses most of its efforts, most of its letters from the acronym, acronym are focused on closing the business, not on delivering the impact or making sure that you close the right deal. This is a key in indication that again, once again, in this case, Medic doesn't really fit with the impact methodology from the get-go. We need to make some modifications there. As we activate, you know, like many companies are starting to use a mutual action plan step by step. Why? Because most of it is a checklist. This is not really to achieve impact for the customers. Most of these things are, let me show you how to do it, step you through, check, check, check. I delivered you the training, you absorb the training, check, check, double check, and we move forward. Good luck with the product. All these things have not in common that they have a primary mindset to help the customer achieve recurring impact so we can be rewarded with recurring revenue. And as a result, many of these pictures, as you will see down here, the, the hoops that the client has to jump through is quite a, a, you know, like a, a, a journey. Now, what we now need to accomplish is how do we align all this? How do we align that the customer not only stays with us and we, because we achieve recurring impact, but perhaps how we grow more seats, more consumption, more usage, more impact. How do we align all this? For that, I'm going to take a look at the cloud. We are part of the cloud and in many ways, the solution sits right in front of us. In this case, Salesforce ran into a similar problem when it wanted to interoperate with its app. One, for example, is DocuSign. And what you'll see is they created uh, in, as a clear example, they claim that the app, app exchange, and in this app exchange, you'll see they created an open standard with an API into it, and anybody who adheres to that standard can interface with Salesforce, and as a result, can interface with each other. That is what we are now in need of. Why can we apply this level of open standardization to customer services as well, not just to products, where fields are being written and, 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 and written and read, but also with services. For that, we found the need to develop an open standard for a recurring revenue operating model. Recurring revenue is clear. Operating model is where you will see that this no longer we can start separating, oh, this is marketing, marketing does awareness, and sales does all the closing, and customer success does the onboarding. What we start to see more and more, that these functions are deeply intertwined. At the core, however, is the ability to achieve customer impact. Once we know, when we deliver customer impact, recurring revenue will be the outcome. Now let's take a look at how we would create an open standard. First of all, we would use a bow tie data model. We say it's like, look, we no longer can adhere to the funnel. The funnel is an incomplete perspective on what is happening. We, are, we need to complete in, in its entirety. Second, what we need to do is we need to make sure that everybody realizes that this function has a compound impact scientifically on the basis of an exponential function towards these latter two stages where the length of the contract, the increase or decrease, have an exponential impact. This is, sci this is a new scientific model that clearly shifts a focus to that right side. What needs to bond all of these functions, all of these, these things, all these departments, all of the programs, is the achievement of helping, the, is helping, is the goal to help the customer achieve the impact that they want. And to do that via multiple models, we, by, via multiple functions, we call that the operating model. And you hear me constantly talk about functions, not departments. 
because marketing may have different function. One function may be an awareness campaign, one uh, such as the web or uh, the website, but there may be a function for existing customers and so on and so forth. Marketing has multiple functions. Sales may have multiple functions and customer success for sure has multiple functions. By looking at them as functions that need to be connected, but they are connected to achieving the customer impact, we can start to see where we need to create interfaces. What you'll see down here, in the, earlier I used an example of ABM. ABM, account-based marketing, account-based strategy or ABX, you know, like are all great acronyms that describe the same thing. Focus on a fewer clients that you really handpick. And it's a great methodology which we wholeheartedly support. What if we would integrate your existing ABM methodology with the impact-based framework? What if we start mapping your existing band framework to the impact framework? What if we do that? We do that to what is called a methodology programming interface. It's the same thing as an API. I just wanted to make sure it sounds reasonable. MPI, a methodology programming interface. What we are doing is we have created that pink swirly line all across and we call that the SPICE framework. It's an impact-based framework. And then what we do is we help and we publish, are about to publish all these interfaces to that. So that whenever you're running Medic or MedPick or MedPick with double C, whenever you do that, we encourage you to continue to do that. That is a well is an investment that you've made and you wanna recoup that investment. We do need to, however, make sure that we align all these different methodologies. Now, some of these methodologies are very well known and easy to integrate. A medic actually is quite an easy one to integrate, as is MAP. But some of these methodologies today, in particular in customer success, we see that they're determined by a tool. In absence of an existing methodology, we often see that the tool become the determinant factor in that, whether that is a Zendesk or uh, a Gainsight or a Tango, they become the customer success methodology. We say again, the tool is great, keep using what you're doing, that's not the problem. But let's make sure that we create a programming interface to that. This gives us an ID on how we are going to do this. Now, what we find is that this is so needed right now. There is such a huge hunger for this, such a huge demand for this, that we feel we at Winning by Design, who have deployed like, let's say, several hundreds of clients with that, we believe that it is of a global importance that we make this an open standard, accessible to everyone. And this open standard, we I want to take you through. I want to describe that for you. Now, what is an open standard? What do we mean with that? And so I'm going to take a look here as I am going. You, what you'll see down here is we are complying with that code. Now, here comes that, you know, like what that is. What this code says is it says you're able to share, to use, to adapt, to remix. We want you, based on the materials we're going to provide, use it and become better of it. Deploy it within your company as you see fit. Uh, put it on slides and sheets and you know, present it where needed. We want to make sure that you do all this. We want to obviously make sure that there's an attribution to the open standard model so we can create popularity around it. And we want to make sure that it is non-commercial use. What do we mean with that? We primarily mean is that you cannot sell it. It would be very dishonest if we create this open standard for all of us to use, where yet one depart, one company will start monetizing that. That is what we want to avoid. Now, this open standard is what we're going to market with. We want all of you to experience that. What we're going to do with that open standard, we're going to make our models available. These models have been published on the YouTube, we aggregated them and we're creating a clear classes and so on, open classes. One of its first of its kind will soon, to be, will soon be delivered. I think on June 17th, I believe that is, we will be delivered via the Revenue Collective, but we also will be talking about it elsewhere. We will be given these and sharing this information openly, also via our YouTube channel, in an effort for everybody to understand and to use these models. These models are the fundamental basis of our consulting business, which is based on, you know, like we have over 800 customers helped these days. What you'll see, what we are going to do, not only the models we're gonna make available, we're also gonna make sure as an open standard, we provide the full impact and critical event framework, which is wrapped, ar wrapped around in its SPICE framework, situation, pain, impact, critical event, and decision. We wanna make sure that we are able to, add, to um, create a programming interface to this open standard framework, 
No license of specific is needed. You don't need to pay, there's no revenue. You can simply start using this right away. You can use the YouTube videos, or if you prefer, you can buy value added services from the company, such as open classes, which you're giving every two weeks and so on and so forth. Now, what we do is we are now making this as of immediate available as a beta. We can now go and I'll take you through our website where this is available. Um, if you are interested, we are taking on beta customers right now until a, a, a full release in, in June. What you'll see here is the landing page of that. You'll see down here the model. Yeah, obviously, this starts to look awfully familiar with what you get, what steps that you get and so on. You'll see down here, these are for revenue leaders. Revenue leaders are people who are running sales organizations inside the company, but also for consultants who want to do what we do, but want to do that with a larger, with their own customer base. We are making this available as resources. And what you do, you simply fill out this field and with it, you will get a license sent to you to use it at, and, and, and to make sure that once you do not break and you start not selling these level of, of um, of licensing that you can keep using it. Again, you can wrap your services around it. That is absolutely fine. You can put 100 salespeople on it or 200 or 300. There is no license for that. That is what we want to make sure that we protect is that they're not, that what in our goodwill, nobody is abusing that. That is what we are starting to prepare for you. This creates an open source model where we are providing our content very similar to an open source world underneath an open standard. And that open standard can be adopted as you'll see. It will be up to us in this market to create a great outcome for future generations. I believe the outcome for future generations of marketing, sales and customer success professional will not happen if we build it on continued proprietary standards. I believe we need to open up the world bring everybody in and create this uniform platform. I believe that historically all sales, customer success and marketing professionals from their guts wanted to do this. They wanted to make sure that they delivered a customer with the right impact. What was missing is a comprehensive full on operating model that get, that included marketing, sales and customer success. And at the core of that, had what you may have referred to in the old days as customer centricity, but that essentially is deliver the customer the impact that they want and the recurring revenue will be the result. Clearly, to achieve recurring impact as the goal will deliver the outcome recurring, uh, will deliver as the outcome recurring revenue. This is the fundamental reason why I'm so, or this is the reason why I'm so excited to share with you I've always had that view. I've always wanted to do this. And within the next 30 to 60 days, this dream has become a reality with hundreds and hundreds of customers already implementing this based on the books, the videos, and so on. We hope that this will help you in your years to come. And as a result, you know, like that, we can provide any of services to you, but we let that all up to the open market. With that said, thank you very much. My name is Jaco Vanekoy. I'm the founder of Winning by Design, and it is my pleasure and my treat to share with you the work and the lessons we have gained over the past 10 years. Thank you.